Here's a couple of poems now. The first is about a lad that wasn't half a good at keeping himself clean. And then a puggle flex it in. And then a scratching started. And it's simply called the Kittley problem. <clears throat> now, if all Huey Clark had been born in a park, he couldn't have been on a war barket. For he'd have hide like a boar with tide marks galore that a peck would have struggled to market. <laughs> Aye, the only bet's clean was a fight so he's in, or so I'd been led to believe. In a little fight, bib, fit a nithy's long nib, for he decked at his nose with his sleeve. <laughs> Well, it was a poster that said it in Tintley's bed, so the, the wife and we, we cried in by. We are biting a sop and to red the place up, just in case he'd the doctor to cry. Well, he was fine, pleased to seize, and it seemed his disease was no more than a thought to the flu, so we both made a start to red out the clart, while the kern would a guard you spew. <laughs> there was simmets and socks hanging out to a box, and gallus's combies and clouts. There was kitlins and cats and an all pair of spots and tatties with seven inch spruits. <laughs> there was remedy sure for coffees with skewer and potions for curing and killing and half eating mates in their various plates all growing their own penicillin. <laughs> well, after two hours or more, we are brought for fresh air, for we'd never afore tried its marrow. We got the place in ship shape with aid of a grape and a weed pickle joints we are barra. <laughs> it was then the wife said, it is state of the bed, it was garner coke with a smell. It would need stripping off rack down to the calf and say would all Huey himself. <laughs> so we we'll rake it about to get stuff look at out and we'll come in some stowed in a press. Ah, it wasn't a great deal, though at least it was hail and just about as black as Huey's face. Well, we couldn't but laugh at the blankets then off. You'd have thought they'd been steeped in cement. But for we both lost our rag getting the mental our bag for you can, it wasn't a good getting them bent. <laughs> Will the wife go outside for now washed Huey's hide and shifted his drawers in his sark? It was then I discovered that the pier crater was covered in flecks that did nothing but bark. <laughs> well, says I, we a shudder as they crawled over his rudder. You're loping with flexmen and brines. Says he as he clad, you can it's near near so bad. Now that the begins is it in his smiles. <laughs> well, I soak it and scrub it and sign him rub it until he was nearly red raw. So I get him his mate saying, well, you'll no need the vet, so the wife and me will hood awa. <laughs> well, at home it was clear, with a small souvenir, we were plastered in spots with our chan. I thanks the all hue, would flex and would flew, and we couldn't get sleep it for clan. <laughs> <laughs> This next little poem <clears throat> is about a lad who got half a vrocht up, he half a fine day in the summer. And it couldn't have been this summer. But he got half vrocht up and he didn't again fit the deed to get cool down. So this is a, a, a really fit happened, and it's called A Question of Manners. <laughs> Jock Stronach was bustling, fair brunt of the reeds, and a bluterous sweat face croontly squeets. He was all fired and fiachy and fab at his wheel, so he turned his attention and foot to get queel. Well, he thought to the beach, but ach, it was our far, and he had no inclination for yoke in the car. So he thought to himself, well, I could I be a juck? The damn be it dubby would do for a duck. <laughs> there was nothing to hinder him, and as far as he could tell, there was nobody about but the jokes in himself. Well, the option was there, and he wanted to tuck it, so he just dart off his clays, and he lope it in, Yuck it. <laughs> well, he come down in his stomach We a nawful of clout, steering up for the bottom a cloud of jokes droppings. <laughs> the water was freezing and his breath got a wah, and when it come back, it come out with an ha, 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 ha. <laughs> he got his sweet come time reliving his youth, I reliving your youth as he capered about. He swam in his belly, sent on to his back, and he splutered and splashed and did nothing but quack. <laughs> now, Meg Mitchell, wheel kent for inquisitive itch. She was pooing him in rasps being the side of the ditch. They'd run into the dam for Jockey was ducking, and she crawled through the buses to see if it was cooking. <laughs> now, by this time, Jockey was out. He entire to his fun, and he was lying in his guts, drawn off in the sun, when a vice for the buses cries, For all you'll burn, I can tell by both cheeks your dint la turn. <laughs> well, 
Jock jerked with a flag with sign on his feet, trying to say to get decent and beat a retreat. He grabbed his bonnet with commendable speed and he clapped it on, fart with D the mast weed. <laughs> well, as he stayed there, reed faced, cross legged and sullen, he'd a hair the guffaw and a Maggie and Colin, and she howled as she kicked it out of the canal, with your bonnet and fat bitter up in your pow. <laughs> All right, on Christ, Jock. You've hen your wee game. I'm surprised at you, Oman. You ought to think shame. Go out of that now unless you're yap. It's a hecht of all minners to stand there and gap. Well, Maggie determined that she'd hear the last say, turned and shouted a joke for the heat of the bray. You're dech kind of minners yourself, come to that. For a gentleman surely would have left at his hat. <laughs> LAUGHTER